lady from Alabama, Senator Brett, for her first hearing is, is recognized. Absolutely. Right. Mr. Chairman, I want to thank you and the ranking member for your warm welcome today at my very first hearing. It is certainly an honor to be on this committee, and I look forward to being a very productive and active part of it. So thank you. So I, my first question um, is for Mr. Dietz or Dr. Dietz. Um, we know the Biden administration has actually put in more rules and regulations in the first two years of their administration than Obama did in eight. When we look at that, um, it undoubtedly contributes to inflation and to stifled economic growth across the board. And I believe the housing sector is no exception to that. I understand the regulations add costs to building homes, 25% um, of the cost of constructing a single family home and 40% of a multi-family home due to regulations. So I know that you face regulations both at a state and a local level, and I wanted to know if you could share some of those existing regulations that are really driving up cost for home buyers. Yeah, I, I think a good example at the federal level is is the Waters of the U.S. rule, which is is both confusing but adds costs, makes it difficult to bring land to market, takes longer, uh, provides a lot of money for consultants to do studies, but provides that that uncertainty during the land development process that can take two, three, four, five years. At the local level, we already talked about zoning rules, but you also have rising impact fees. Uh, delay requirements, just the delay itself of getting land approved, construction projects approved, all of that results in higher rents and higher home prices. So if we're, if we're really serious about tackling housing affordability, we need to find ways to reduce the red tape and bring homes to market faster. Absolutely. Well, given those hurdles, can you tell me, is it harder, single family homes, multifamily homes, who have been impacted more by this ultimately? Well, if you listen to builders enough, which I do, I travel across the country a lot, uh, they will say all of us, right? Um, it, it's not necessarily a competition. They're all sort of challenging in their own ways. Multifamily, it's more density issues. With single family, it's concerns about land supply and lot development. With remodeling, it's the skilled labor shortage. Um, but, you know, if, if we're looking at low-hanging fruit, to improve mm -hmm. the, the availability of housing in the country, reducing housing regulatory costs is, is a big way to get there. And you're saying home buyers across the board are impacted? Yeah, I, I probably disproportionately affects first time buyers, first generation mm -hmm. buyers, because again, that, that entry level right. construction, that townhouse construction uh, is, is difficult too, that sort of light touch density. Uh, but generally speaking, it is driving up the cost of all forms of housing. So it's people that want to start the American dream Excellent. that are being stifled exactly. by this. So the past two years, inflationary policies of the Biden administration have compounded um, the naive belief that the inflation would be transitory. We've seen it hit us everything from groceries to gas, and obviously um, home buying is no exception to that. The past year alone, the Federal Reserve has raised the Federal Reserve fund rates nearly five percentage points, and that's material impacted the price of housing, um, driving up borrowing cost and monthly mortgage cost to the average American home buyer. What is your outlook of the housing demand and how does that impact the expe expected housing construction in the next, I'd say, you know, what do we see in the next two years, maybe five years, 10 years? Yeah, right now we're, we're in a bit of a, a downturn, as, as Dr. Herbert talked about. Uh, our expectation is that single-family construction and multifamily construction are likely to decline this year. But we see a turning point ahead for single-family home building. In fact, after 12 straight months of decline for builder sentiment that we measure each month, uh, we actually got an uptick in January. So I think, I think in, the, in the short run, we're, we're going to see some stabilization. And then 2025 through 2030, if we can just get the regulatory burdens out of the way, 2025 through 2030 will be a pretty good runway for home building growth because we've got to reduce that structural housing deficit that's in place, that shortage. Absolutely. And as we talk, obviously, about the home building, I think it's important to make sure um, that people can can get access to capital, that they can be financed. Is there anything you can tell us about the status of the loan market or anything that the committee needs to consider to make sure that capital is available um, for these people who want to, to achieve the American dream? Yeah, this is where it, we, we don't see enough focus. I think when we talk about lending and loans in housing, we're typically thinking about mortgages on the demand side. But you know, keep in mind about two thirds of home construction is undertaken by smaller builders and they get their capital by going to community banks and borrowing funds. So we call that acquisition, development and construction lending. And one of the things we know about the business cycle is that particular market tightens 
when we go into a downturn. So the concern is we see mortgage interest rates begin to settle back, a turning point comes in view, but builders and land developers can't get access to credit. So there's a lot of different ideas in terms of how to address some of those challenges. One would be uh, extending the secondary market that currently exists for purchase mortgages over to builder and construction loans, and that would help reduce some of the cost of credit and make sure that capital is available, particularly in, I would say, in like rural markets where it's more difficult to obtain that kind of, uh, of lending for builders. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Dr. Dietz. Uh, thanks, Senator Brett. Uh, Senator Warren.